happy birthday. What are we talking about today? Celebrations, dude. What Ow! are we talking about today? That is a today? sharp piece Chuck's of Chuck's just fuck. getting into it, guy. Oh, do you want a little... Chuck's... Do you want a little amuse-bouche? <laughs> oh, you got something? You got some flavor <laughs> no, for me, dude? Seems like... <laughs> you got a little... I hit do you want to ease into it? You want to ease into it? hit my it? shin on the... All right, here's what we're going to do. So, it is our actual birthday... Cat and Cloud eight year anniversary today. So we got three eight year olds right in the now. building. <laughs> eight years. Three eight year olds. More yep. than eight years in business because we were in business before we opened our first store. We've always which been is what our anniversary business. is based off of. It's true. We've been doing things. We had a little web store. Absolutely. We had we're a little like pop nine up. And a nine and a half since the actual Whoa, creation don't of the you business, dare. right? Is that true? When is we were just a, a just a podcast in a dream. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm scrolling back through Instagram to kind of get some rough dates, and, and well, yeah, it's like I just know the, the date dates. on our like uh, that I always have to fill out of like the date that when we filed the paperwork okay. with the state of California was May first, 2015. Okay, May first, wow. 2015. That's a good thing. We yeah. filed our our, our like, been LLC. LLC May one. Holy paperwork. Okay. Sh- Shit. We were a limited liability corporation in yeah. the state of California. Don't come after us, bro. We got limited Shouts liability. Out May right? 1, 2015. <laughs> I can be held a lot of things. Responsible is not one of them. Just in a limited manner. Zero <laughs> percent chance. Um, okay. So we do have a prompt. So one of the things that we're putting together for our website is essentially a timeline of how we got to where we got. So we have a prompt to identify and maybe quickly discuss. <laughs> <laughs> Some of what we think might be our milestones at Cat and Cloud. So I'm, I'm, re- oh, I'm rewinding oh. all of, all of the way. So we're not talking milestones that led us to create Cat and Cloud, though. Well, I think it, everything's up oh. for discussion. So yeah, when I was kind of sitting on it the other day, the first thing that popped into my head was our camping trip. Yeah, it yeah. seems to be a a point of conversation, which was some point in 2015. When we actually be decided b- before the, the LLC, obviously before the LLC, yeah. we actually decided to do the damn thing, and we went on a several day off grid because we were gonna <laughs> go. We 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 thought we res- we did reserve a campsite. No, we reserved we one. Did. So we had a campsite. Allow, yeah, no that fires. That's not where no, we ended up. No st- fires. <laughs> and we're like, no fires. Get out of here. Yeah. We're out. We're Who gonna go to figure camp this with out. No fires. That sounds like the dumbest idea ever. Mm-hmm. So we went to that little corner store thing. Yeah, Do you we remember asked. that? Mm-hmm. We asked the person, how, is there a place we could like go camp and have a fire? He said, yeah, drive down the road and then go over that way. <laughs> yeah, Thank goodness like he doesn't like somebody trying to rob our car when they did that. <laughs> and so <laughs> Just to think about that. It was pretty dope. We just randomly parked somewhere and then trudged out into the beach about a mile. Yeah, it was yeah, a long we walk. We did multiple long walks. Sussed out a walks. spot. Yep. We set didn't up, have a ton of stuff. That was good. Set up a couple tents. Yep. I mean, yeah. we all had like full hands. Oh no, full we had, hands we out, hands full hands out, full hands <laughs> we in. We were fully. It was more than a backpacking's worth of stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I told that story at orientation. Uh, it was pretty cool. Got some cool feedback. Like, what was the apex point? Like, how did when did you guys know that you were going to do it? And I was like, well, we'd kind of talked about this and that for a while. Mm-hmm. But and that trip it, in and of itself wasn't to plan it. It no, kind of we came just, through our organic conversations through the trip. We were just trying to get together. We were just trying to hang. Wasn't it you like guys... an old birthday? Like it was a post birthday hang for you? Ye- Could be. I feel like that's the ye- best. all of us that's when we're best at getting together is birthdays. Birthdays. <laughs> birthdays. So wait, was the trip before we had decided to do it? Then was yeah, it just I think a we trip? had kind of gotten more serious on the trip and decided, yeah, let's get let's go after it because mm. we had. I think if I remember correctly, we talked. We had our podcast going. We were getting into it on the trip and talking about all our stuff. And I think that was when Chuck's all, well, you know, like we could probably, you know, try to figure something out. Wait, you and I were podcasting before? I think we were podcasting before this I trip. So. When nope. was the first? Nope. Were Can't we be. just writing? Because here's, here's what I remember. Because I was in slow and then my whole thing went to shit. And that right. was when I remember calling you because we yeah, had been talking sure. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like... I'm in panic zone 10,000. Right. Do you guys think we could actually do this or not? And then... Oh, I thought you came to, to work with us at Dune first before we got to that level. 
Well, you, I think that I think all of it happened at about the same okay. time because I remember the day that all the shit went down. I definitely called Julia, yeah, and I was talking through it with her, and then I had the interview. Maybe there's more time than I think because I had the job interviews and then I got yeah, hired. You at almost Whole Foods, worked at Whole Foods. Almost worked in the butcher shop because I think when, when <laughs> yeah, we went camping, you had already of that. Yeah, you had already been barista i think when we went camping you had already like been staying on the couch here and there and working the day or so that makes sense so i think we had like moved to that point in life because maybe we were having and i feel like we had no, started cause... talking about doing the podcasty stuff but i remember when the podcast came out it was already called the cat and cloud podcast and when is that we, true yep when we started talking we didn't have the name Weren't, well, you and I were doing something though, because it was a little bit of the part of contention that made all the stuff get weird. You and I were doing stuff, and that was that was a no. Thing. I I had uh, like we were we I were definitely hung hanging. out with I'd hung out with you guys. We started writing the blog you, again. That was, yeah, so we were writing blog. at least. It was the blog. Okay, so we were writing the old Chewbacca blog. Yeah, so we, we made a couple make, posts. Yeah, but that was then, and we never did a Chewbacca podcast. No, yeah, that it was makes Cat sense. And Cloud because I remember yes, sitting in your correct. house okay, in true. Santa Barbara running through names mm -hmm. and chuck is like vetoing everyone <laughs> yeah, like, yeah that's we were, dumb that's dumb that's totally. dumb and we're like trying so hard like that's dumb yeah. that's dumb and we're just like oh, and that was God. after the camping trip for sure <laughs> that was after the camping yeah. trip so the camping trip to me felt like it was again who knows what I, reality it probably was. was a let's explore what could happen that's what i that i kind of felt like it was like okay cool we've got some borderline verbal commitment they're like yeah we're down and then it was mm -hmm. more of a deeper exploration to say like, do we actually want the same things? What are we really trying to do? Yeah. What are our expectations here? Like, what would it look like? Right. You know, because we talked about a bunch Talk of about different values. shit. Right. Yeah. Mission, vision, values. Exactly. Talked about locations of where we might decide to do a business and came to, I think we came to the idea that Santa Cruz was the spot on that trip for sure. But yeah, my my memory at first was like, let's just get together because things are weird and start talking about potential and ideas. And we definitely did that very handily. Over we some definitely did that. Libations in the evening and great tunes. Bonobo was a big part of that night yet again. Nice food that Jared cooked. Did, well, I cooked on stew. That was great. I remember we listened to the J. Cole and J. Cole was album hot. Yep. on the way up mm -hmm. to Big Sur. We went um, into the lime kiln camping, and uh, no, yeah. we took a we took a nice walkabout. We tried to do some video, and we're like, saw the bobcat. I got the scared. Bobcat. Yep, yep. Oh, always, it's always scared of bobcats. You made some espresso with the we had the the my pressy my pressy, thing. My pressy that was delightful. Thing. Yeah, a delightful espresso. All right, mm. so I got camping trip values exploration early 2015. True story. Yeah, who knows? That was where it kind of. It was a full moon, and it yeah, because we had to have night. the name before May first, right? For I actually think that camping trip everything. was like in the October September is war times. Oh, of twenty twenty four or 2014? 2014? Wow, think, are we? I think ten year anniversary. Well, but I, I don't think we came up with the. Yeah, I think the company kind of came out of after conversations there, but still, yeah, I think it was like twenty fourteen. No, oh, trip out on this. Trip out on this. Dude. You filed it in May. Yeah, May 1st, 2015. It happened really fast in that <laughs> regard because I left Verve in 2014 and I worked with Dune for just over a year. Yeah. But they had agreed to let us start the whole the roasting and website and we did do the podcast. No, okay. it's it like I talked to Wait. Mike Iyer in no, totally. August 24... Uh, couldn't have been August because no, I left August, in August. I talked to my guy in the summer. Maybe it was like July, June, July 2015 and told him that we were going to start, that I was going to leave. Right. And could I stay through the end of the year? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here, check this out. So say, look for our email. So, yeah, that's where I was going. Same so play. Okay. here is what year is, what is me, that? Me, you, it doesn't well, say because it's so that? far. Oh, June 30th, 2015. This is us in the oh Jared. yeah that's the first podcast. so that's jared and i in the podcast studio with patrick milroy the yeah. description look it's got the cat and cloud insignia but check this out we didn't have it yet though did so we? if i go back this is concurrent we were also blogging 
on the old Chewbacca.com mm -hmm. website at the same time. So they were, and both I, of them were kind of running in tandem, yeah, which is like, we brought back the blog. And then that one night I came to your house, I'm like, we need a podcast. I got this recorder and exactly. we drove around town. So yeah, that's where I'm hearing this in recording. my mind is we drove around recording, parked in front of Patrick Melroy's place. He's like, you're reporting, recording a podcast. Come in, have a drink with me. I have a podcast some, studio. Thank yeah, I have a podcast much. studio. We got to talk about this for real. I actually do this. And I think that's why I'm in my mind, I'm like, we recorded the podcast before we were Cat and Cloud. Probably. For sure. Because we did heavy banking. And we because, just had the logo and we were going to still the, use that. Yeah. Because for the first month or two, we actually did two episodes a week. We were banking right. the shit out of them. And we had, we we had like, launch. we had one or two months like in the bag. Yeah. We knew we needed to be ready to launch. Bank. Yeah. So there's some history for you there. And we yeah. did. We had like an epic recording studio in the basement of this really cool historical building. It was awesome. They did. It was fun. Yeah. We had a, a bunch cool of people come to Santa Barbara and be on the podcast. We had Babinski. We had, man, we had a lot of different people come through. It was fun. Um, I'm trying to figure out. So it's fuzzy because there, there's like this chain of events that happened really really quickly and, and I we were in fight or flight <laughs> i don't know which one you guys have to tell me which ones are, are noteworthy so we got the camping trip that sets the whole thing off that's and then, noteworthy and it then was in our kickstarter basically yeah okay so basically so all in a row though right after the camping trip we launched the podcast and then launched is different than recorded so yes right launched uh -huh. the podcast and then very shortly thereafter that we launched our web store and yeah. we started roasting coffee inside of the dune roastery in santa barbara so this all happened in a period of like two or three months to where it's like we found the name we launched the podcast we started roasting and selling coffee in this web store that i remember had here's a package going out of the web store in july 2015 yeah, I think it, that was the first revenue of the company it was July 2015. Okay, that makes sense. So it's like, does um, we, had, we had a mug, the hat, yeah, Chewbacca shirt, and the Chewbacca shirt, and the coffee, and yeah, it was a really tiny website, but we were were doing it. So all those things. And the coffee was what Lemu and we had some Agraciano's coffee because I hit him up and, and I was like, let me get some Los Lajones up in the mix. Yep. And which a little was, bit of Lemu. Oh, and we were selling the Pullman Big Steps because yep. I had met Adam Metalman yep, who had designed that thing. And I was like, this timbre's sick, bro. Yep. And we were handwriting all the labels, which was awesome. Heck, cool. Remember that, dude? Los Lajones Natural. There it is. Graciano yeah, Cruz. Awesome. A delightful thing. A delightful thing. Pretty incredible. Oops, I clicked it out. Maybe you didn't even see it. Oops, I clicked it again. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's me with my knife writing on stuff. Um, yeah, we'd handwrite every label. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing to me feels like what you mentioned, Jared, which is, you know, we signed our signed our lease and started our build out. So yep. what's the most important thing here? It's like we signed a lease, started the build out, or finished the build out by launching our Kickstarter. Or got a loan. Or got a loan. Or got an SBA <laughs> loan. <laughs> All good things. I'm trying All to think in order of like a timeline. Like someone's going to read this on yeah. the website and be like, what happened? And it's yeah. like, it's I mean, kind signing, of like their groups, right? Signing it's like your first lease is pretty. Signing yeah. our lease, finished it out with a Kickstarter. Um, I think the Kickstarter in and of itself is a big feat. Because the lease totally. was June 1st, right? June 1st, 2015. Whatever it was, we. You would know better yeah, than yeah, me. I can't that's remember. That's what I think it was. I okay. think that's correct. But right again, you said. Wait, you think 2015 was the lease? Got to be June yeah. 1st, 2015. Yeah, because we had to rush up years till 2030. That's right, and we had to rush up to uh, find out if we wanted the building and could pull it, and we had to like look around like crazy, and yeah. look in the ceilings and see can we vision, can we make a vision yeah, out of this like place? Yeah, from like an eight foot ceiling. From like yeah, can, and it was like yep, let's tear these out and make some height and not make it so you can touch the ceiling when you're flat foot on the ground and feel <laughs> yeah. like you're in a cave. And we right. did it. Right. And then we didn't have enough money to buy the roaster. So we're like, what do we do? Let's do a Kickstarter. Kickstarter. When did we break ground? Was it early 2016 that we broke ground? No. Yeah. Because yeah. this imagine. is from March 2016. And we opened today, September 30th. September. The last day of 2016. The, kicks, the Kickstarter. September. Let's find this Kickstarter here. 
looking at a Kickstarter. Why didn't I take more? <laughs> Chuck's all. I'll go back and check the notes. In or yeah, we'll just see all the uh, architecture documents that took Oh, forever. I've got plenty of those, I guess, in my electronic mail. I think you there know. was a big gap between... Because we went to Guatemala in January 2016. Oh, well, that was okay. nice. That was, that's an important one. Put that Chuck's, on the mix. Chuck's suggestion was like, we have to go on a, a origin trip. We did a brief, <laughs> we did <laughs> a brief <laughs> exchange. <laughs> and uh, we did a brief yeah. exchange there. Yeah, we worked we at the uh, uh, Bay of Vista Cafe mm -hmm. in Antigua, downtown Antigua. Got to make some coffee. That was really, really that super was fun. fun. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, because we must have started construction like the beginning of 2016 because I've got like bid like construction bids and stuff like that in like early 20 or the end of 2015 early 2016 we're breaking ground break at portola the ground yeah so then concurrently we're breaking ground at portola we're doing our pop-up on mondays at companion because yep. we're still roasting coffee in santa barbara <laughs> mm -hmm. so we're driving up to santa barbara once a week to roast, package, hand label, ship out coffee from the post office. Because when we started, mm -hmm. well, we all weren't living there. We all weren't living in Santa Cruz yet. It was no. like, um, yeah, totally. You were still living in Santa Barbara and I was still living in slow and driving up to Santa Barbara for some other work. <laughs> yep. So yeah, maybe when we broke ground, because I started working at Companion right when I moved back. Yeah. It's hard. the timelines are a little <laughs> fuzzy because then when I to talk about this, started hilarious. doing my like so that was January so basically January first is when I left Santa Barbara and we didn't have a place to live or settle. We went to that's when we started in January going to Vertigo. So I think we maybe went on a few more trips mm. then in January to to, back to Santa Barbara to finish up. And then Vertigo. In San Juan Batista. In San Juan Batista. Yeah, Dimitri and Ryan. Got they it. said, we got your back if you want to roast here. And we started driving there. Because I definitely, we took that trip with Tanner, our first employee, to Santa Barbara. And we have some of that on video. And I have some pictures of that. But I was still in that place when we loaded up my car with green coffee to take to Vertigo. And so I remember yeah. we did transition there. So that was in January. We transitioned to roasting at Vertigo. Our Kickstarter project launched May 9th, 2016. Got it. So by okay. this point, we were in swing with the build out. Because I remember when we filmed the video, we were inside Portola that had basically all the walls gone. And it was yeah. starting to get framed back up. Yeah. Yep. And we had enough Getting money to fi finish the building and or buy the roaster, but not both. Yeah. And yeah. tell the story of and Chuck, and he popped his head in the window. Hey. We <laughs> raised thirty-five thousand dollars, dude. Thank you, everybody, Everyone. so much. Thanks for yeah, the belief. It was incredible. We needed thirty-four thousand four hundred twenty-three dollars to help bring the project to life. Three hundred twenty-five backers. Yep. Plus Mike Reezy, respect. Yeah. Yep. On respect. the side, he's all. I don't want any of this money cut out of the equation, so I'm gonna give you some cash <laughs> you money. Hey, credit I'm card down. <laughs> yeah, he's all so so about it. You're gonna get all of this. Yep, Kickstarter. And I think we needed 30. We got 35. Is that true? 34 and change. Uh, yeah, I'm round, yeah. rounding it up. All right, 35. We'll all round with let you, me, bro. We bought that roaster. We'll go We'll we'll go round and around. Then we... Yeah, okay. So, uh, and then, I mean, the next legitimate date would be, you know, we're open. 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 Which would be September. Hired eight human beings. 30th. Nine. 2016. Nine human beings. I can, we, can see, we can put up the picture and count them. They all have faces. And then for filling out... Yeah, no, never mind. Sidebar. Many Full things. sidebar. I went sidebar. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Um, next big milestone for our company would be not too far after when we opened our second location, Abbott Square. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm like scraping over like a bunch of things. Like I'm looking back at what, what we're doing and it's kind of crazy. Well, it's like finishing the build out, you mean? Or well, like, no, uh, I mean, so when we opened, we're open, right? But like yeah, in we between were. the time that we opened and we went to our second store, it's like we did a residency at La Marzocco, La Marzocco yeah. Cafe in Seattle where we yeah. sent 
ourselves and other baristas for multiple weeks. We also sent baristas to Origin. That was super fun. We sent baristas to Origin. We were on the cover of Fresh Cut Magazine. We went to Australia and spoke at Out of the Box uh, for La Marzocco. That was so fun. Um, We spoke at SCA, SCA in uh, Seattle yeah. through yeah. like of, well maybe not that yeah you fully and I packed house spoke, that you was 2017 that, that year so we spoke, spoke that year you the spoke the next year next year yeah. yeah yeah um so there's all of these things that are kind of building towards our second location mm-hmm. which is Abbott Square so I my first picture is July fifth, twenty seventeen yeah, of July Abbott. 1st I think was July first, July first was the opening day. Yep, yep, yep. That was a big deal. We were in the Abbott Square Marketplace, attached to the Museum of Art History here in Santa Cruz. Yeah, which is a really cool development for downtown. And that's, and yeah, it's been like it a was, safe haven and a and a community building space that's been huge for especially like weekend evening life. Yeah, which has downtown. Been great. Mm-hmm. what are what are like some some of the things that you you guys kind of remember from the first year so and we're like, kind of doing half we start paying ourselves <laughs> well like we're kind of doing a half list but i want people who are listening to this to get more than just like yeah that's a list of shit you did cool like what yeah uh. well i mean one for me what my first daughter was born what like uh april 16th 2015 so like almost concurrent to the business was like having a newborn, which now Baka you can relate to. But it's pretty sick, dude. But just like having that, <laughs> you know, just like starting a family along with starting a brand new business. Yeah, it's and wild. The, yeah, just the 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 ups and the joys and challenges that that takes on. I man, I man, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of. I mean. Continuing to improve on the space is something that I remember, right? We opened with like this bare bones space and we didn't have everything and the space for everything we wanted. So we continued to build. I remember that a lot. I remember trying to create and literally creating systems. I mean, leading our first and creating our first orientation with mission and values is a huge, important thing to who we were and are. Like doing that was really important and scary because you have to essentially talk about every philosophy and idea that you have to people who have never heard it before in a way where it's like, this is what we're going to do. And then they've never seen it lived out as well. So then you get to practice all of that while the whole time knowing that we're going to need to grow. So you have to put leaders in places to take responsibilities fairly quickly Yeah, for like, I would say for a company, right? Like when we knew there's three of us, and we had to get to about three stores to be able to pay ourselves enough to afford rent in this town at all, anywhere, not like even nicer spots at all. It was like, I how mean, do you do four that? Four stores, right? yeah. yeah it we was need four we need stores systems. in five years. Oh yeah, it was four I, stores. I thought it was. Three. I think it was three. It was, was three. What we needed. It was okay. three. Three and was five. what we needed. Three and five. Yeah, right. but it was like three. And, so it was that, but it was like create the systems, create the the, the training, the orientation, like a lot of like back end work on. Stuff we had a lot of experience in because we had built training systems for other companies, but there was a difference to creating it with connection to our mission and values versus just creating it to, you know, to do the operational portion. So yeah, we were and, in that a lot. And just the realization of like when you go from one store to two stores and you go from nine or 10 people to 20 people, yeah. just that cultural dilution happens and that leadership dilution happens and I just remember that was like a big learning point for us, mm-hmm. right? In having to move, like it felt so good at Portola with everyone there, but then you take half of those people away, mm-hmm. put them in a new store, and it just takes again like so much time and energy to mm-hmm. like refill, uh, refill the well. Yeah, and you have different kinds of leaders who focus on different kinds of things as well, and then when everybody's together, you have this like ubiquity and and yeah unity in general and then you split it and it's like one of the leaders at the one source sees all this one way and the other one sees the other one that's when you learn how well you're communicating your mission and your values and how they live and breathe and you get to get into that whole process so that was a great opportunity to learn were we so i remember us being we were profitable in our first year is that correct uh maybe in the sense that like i don't think we were paying ourselves very much 
But we were yes, but we, we were, didn't lose money as a well as an organization. There's also like depreciation and all sorts of stuff you have to do. Yeah, with that no, first. I mean we were. I mean that you can go, you can argue both ways. Break that, it, like, break it down. Had we let's go. You know, if we were should have been paying ourselves like some kind of market rate, then well, probably which not. We weren't for sure, but right. yeah. But it's like almost that's kind of how you one way you'd look at it is like, is your business really profitable? It's like, well, if it's really profitable, then everyone's getting a market rate. So in that regard, we've pretty much never but been how marketable. Do you, like <laughs> market rates, like kind of hard to identify though. It is a moving target. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how would you identify market rate? So it's like you could take what each of us had made at another company, yeah. which is like we all took a like pretty fucking big pay hit to start yeah, our own 100%. place. Um, but like we also were doing interesting work to where right. it's like if you took Jared as you know he's like the head of operations or director of retail or whatever the hell was going on at dune like you can make a case for like there's the for paying him that because he's got the history for it now all of a sudden essentially the three of us are like co-ceos and operating managers of this thing where like we have experience in the industry but absolutely no experience doing like the job of an owner yeah <laughs> like, no, right? right it's like what is market rate for a green owner who's incredibly experienced I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, I that's don't know. fair. For how we made it work, yeah, we were profitable every year since we started. I think if some random accountant were to come in and say, though, like, were you profitable? That that's what Chuck's saying is like, at that time, the market rate would have been maybe three or four x what we were paying ourselves. So <sighs> you couldn't say you'd be profitable if you were trying to live by like the business standard, right? right? But I mean, but in terms but of, but like, we made a profitable business but in terms by the of choices how we, made we made it work, right? Right. Right. Our business was profitable every year since we started. Yeah, has that been true? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting because I get it. I get it so twisted because we talk about our cash flow position a lot, right? And like Which sometimes, is different. yeah, it's totally different. But it also is like I think about that more now than the straight profitability. Anyway, yeah, I think it's more important to think about things in terms of cash flow versus like an income statement or profitability. How people mm -hmm. talk about it. It's so weird. It's like I really miss those early days. There's some. Thing about them that I can't tell if I'm, you know, fantasizing or not. I don't know. I think that's but real, right? I meet people, you know, in the Bay Area, and it's like they're just serial, you know, founders of businesses. Like they love that, like one to two years of like an idea starting a business, and then they once it hits a certain sustainable point, they're like, all right, I'm. I think I'm going to go do something else. So that's intriguing to me too. Cause I like the building phase, but I also like the feeling of it felt like w whatever happened in that first year, we could fix it. Yeah. And the promises that we had were genuine, but they were limited in that now it's like, okay, so if I'm looking at myself as an individual, like as a business owner, eight years later, after we started, it's like, I have a lot more flexibility autonomy in how i construct my work day it's like I, I don't have to be in the cafe every day for things to run and that wasn't true for any of us right. like mm -hmm. even you who have never pulled a shot of espresso <laughs> in your life before you know it's like you're I, in there helping washed, out washing washed dishes, washed dishes you're, you know? you're busting the cafe you're making it nice and you're making the books run and like helping out in the road it's not like you know everyone He's was doing attention He's yeah in. everyone was doing something and there yeah. was no other way to do it so it's like i have so much more freedom now and also i'm earning a better salary now but i i think i'm more stressed out now yeah i mean i think that's natural too right as your business grows there's more responsibility I mean, I guess it was pretty stressful in the beginning just to see, like, will it work? But I feel like we were pretty confident I in felt the beginning. Good about that. I felt the scope of things was something that was we, manageable. we could completely handle to where it's like, you got a location, three people who are really good at what they do. We know coffee inside and out in a neighborhood that we're familiar with. Like, I didn't have any qualms about putting up what we put up to get Portola yeah. up and running and to yeah. be able to deliver on guest service you know we're always trying to figure out the employee experience because that's something we're passionate about but had no we never created a culture from like bare like you know whole no, cloth I mean, before I, yeah i was a hundred percent believe that we were going to be successful in what we're doing like you said we had the industry knowledge with the mm. financial knowledge we know down to a t how the business model works of it you guys had really strong relationships with everybody in the community in the part of town that we opened the store in it's like those are all 
I think super important mm-hmm. ingredients to be successful when you first open yeah. a, a shop. Absolutely. And now it just feels like there's so much, like the weight feels wild to me. And yeah. I'm, I'm like wondering sometimes, I'm on a tangent here, but I'm just like wondering how that's going to work long term. Is that something that's going to fade? Like, am I going to be able to scale with that? It's like, I don't know. I mean, we talk about this in our like leadership meetings, right? It's like the weight is heavier because it's like if we're, you know, running a larger revenue business with a larger number of team members, you know, it's like you want to get to some amount of like sustainable cash flow generation of the business, not right. just like income, because any mistake you make is magnified is mag is like orders of magnitude more negatively impactful to your business than when you're small right right and we've had you know this is one of my big focuses as we've grown is how do we put in guardrails or you know how do we put in you know how do we make sure we're capitalized enough financially or how do we put in operational guardrails and systems to minimize the effect of like huge drawdowns that you know financial drawdowns that mistakes could bring to make things incredibly stressful uh like i.e like covid (laughs) (laughs) that's a pretty solid example right covid is like an example of like something no one could see coming and if your business wasn't flexible enough well capitalized enough uh generalized buttoned up and right yeah ability to like buttoned up enough it's like we very quickly were able to transition to a business model that was sustainable through covid which I mean, I'll credit just like all of our determination to do what's necessary, which is I think why we're successful as entrepreneurs and mm. business owners in general. But it's like that if you if you're all if you're already not in a great place, it's like COVID is just gonna sink you. Yeah, destroy and just things like that, or just any other kind of mistakes. There can be uh, opening a location that doesn't work out. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like that can sink or like move your business back years if you open a location that turns out to be unprofitable mm-hmm. or, uh, yeah, negatively impacting the business in some way. It's like that's going to at best like stall your stall your ability Absolutely. to move forward years. And at worst, that's going to sink you. Yeah. So that's those that's that's why I think the weight is there, because the actions that you make, if they're not done well, uh you know, have have the ability to impact you negatively in such a big way and the people around you is like something i think about a lot too where it's the difference in perspective from being an employee to being an owner is really interesting because when i was an employee i was always a hard worker and i've never been much of a complainer in terms of my job to do because i've always felt like a job is a choice mm. i've never been in a place where i couldn't get a job it was more about what job was i going to get You know what I mean? So it's like, even when I had no skills, like, I feel like people have a choice. Like you can work at a fast food place. I could work at a coffee shop. I could work at probably 20 different jobs. I could probably get like most normal people could get one of 20 different jobs. And like, once you get the job, just you do the fucking job to the best of your ability. You don't whine, you don't complain, not because you're doing it for someone else, but because it's like part of how you see yourself. That's how I always saw work. I was like, I'm a person who does a good job. So I'm going to do a good job. Even if I'm shoveling shit, I don't care. Yeah. You take pride in what Mm -hmm. you do. So it's like once to start like growing in an industry where I'm like, Oh, I'm going to be here for a really long time. I want to make a career out of this. I, I don't know. It's interesting to look back at a lot of my experiences from this vantage point and just to think like, you don't even really think about it. You're just assuming it's like a business because it's a business that's full of people, full of guests or customers or clients or whatever, that there's this big pot of money that's just sitting there that can be used for kind of whatever. (laughs) And you know what I mean? (laughs) It's like, it's really easy to depersonalize a business or it's like we're business owners and we're people trying to operate this business, but we're also operating within a framework. Yeah. And like if you're talking about like bringing people up monetarily or bringing people up into certain positions is like I don't think I had ever had as much of an appreciation for it as I had now mm-hmm. knowing like all the other little things that can happen based on just like one decision. You know what I mean? Like it's just I don't know. I Like I'm no. rambling now. No, but, but it's, it's like, like we're 100 percent like we're like resource out like being a business owner is like we're resource allocators absolutely right it's like our 
our the whole strategy choice, is around that. Every choice that faces us is about like allocating resources to one place versus another with like limited resources. And you don't necessarily really know if those resources are going to grow. Are they going to shrink next year? Are they going to grow? Like, and are you going to put them in the right place? Are you going to put them somewhere and it's not going to work out? And it's like lighting money on fire because we put them over here and that didn't work out. And that was just like lighting money on fire. So it's like, I think I always think of like business owners as just constantly having to make choices to allocate resources. And it's a really mm. hard job. Yeah, I, I hear you. I think it's a, that's, I think it's a fun job. Right? No, I think that, I, yeah, that's I'm where you're going, you're not, right? The, well, it's, it's, well, I just always and, looked at it that way. It's yeah. like when you see the things that need to happen and then you try to mix it with the things that you need as a human being to feel or the things that you know you'd like to to be experiencing, whether it's a little bit of autonomy or it's enough money coming into your bank account that you're not like literally living exactly to the T paycheck to paycheck or less like behind, right? Like when you see those goals, for me, I think that's just, that was where I knew we would be, we would be successful. Then you try to find your way to allocate resources in, and it's a matrix and yeah. that's where it's fun, but it's also challenging if you don't, if you don't find a way to find your right people and you can't clarify what you need to get there. And I think that is something where the three of us have worked well together is we've found our way to answer those questions. Yeah, it's like clarity of vision, right. clarity of mission. A lot of communication will help. A lot of honest conversations will help. A lot of discussion right. of different viewpoints. Being ready to rework things if need be, right? right. We've reworked <laughs> our mission and values to be clear multiple times over, but they were always in the same heart and the same idea. But as we figured out, we need to communicate better <laughs> so that we could have better leadership step in under us, right? For us, which you have to have for us to be able to build another store or build anything new. You know, you have to continue to do that. And I think that's something that was really fun and challenging, but you have, we figured those things out and continue to figure those things out. So for me, I, I don't know. I feel Sometimes the way I look at it is like the other side, which is like, well, what choice do we have but to move in that direction, whatever that direction may be? And that's just like the way I look at the world oftentimes is, well, I don't have a choice. You know, like we're, we need these three stores. And if I, and if, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there's like, mm. I don't get that. I don't care internally that I switch off feelings for anything other than it's like, well, that's what has to happen. So we got this mission, we got these values. We have to have at least this amount of leaders and this way for it to work, you know, and this amount of money coming in the, the door and this amount of money coming to ourselves and to our team. So whatever that is, that's what we're doing. And I don't, I don't really give space for anything else until that's done. Mm. Do right, you feel like that now? Like if we're yes. talking about doing other things? Absolutely. So you don't have like, is like, how we're trans i know we're like getting a little bit off the top it's fine of it, we're no, there's no way we're gonna finish the no, timeline. Just, this, this is one, part one anyway this is part one uh, of good conversation. <laughs> does the scale impact how you see it or you're no, like I, kind of the same emotional state whether it's 10 people or 100 people i think in the organization yeah emotional state my emotional state changes for better or worse based on collaborative work and doing something that I think v v benefits the growth of our company. And that can literally live in the cultural level. It can live in the ability to provide more for our team. It can live in a lot of different places, but it feels this like, so that that'll make me feel more alive to do that. But when it comes down to solving for X, which is the joke we put on the board yeah. a lot, solving for X, is a lot of things. Solving for X is like, okay, we want to make sure that we don't regress. So there's a lot of things that can fit in that box for me. There's solving for X, which is making sure that our upper leadership team and subsequently everybody else continues to move up in some form of pay scale. There is solving for X, which is making sure everybody gets more tied in culturally. So again, there's more freedom for ourselves and our team leaders and our people mentally. Like all that stuff fits in the same scope for me and i'm like well we have to do that because that's the best version of it and i have no emotional fear around it i'm just like this is what we have to do and then people come along i'll get emotional because i'll feel like it takes a long time sometimes and i'm impatient for sure as mm. you've seen but for me i just see that writing on the walls i'll solve for 
more opportunity, whether that opportunity can fit in all those places, right? Right. So Freedom, you see it as like money. a, it's like an exploration of solving a problem, which is fun if you choose it to be. Right? For, like, my, for my brain, it's right? fun. For a lot of people's brains, that shit is very stressful. And for my the, brain, it's fun and just like how I look at the and world. And then the financial like implications, whatever they are, don't. Well, they just are. They don't bother you in a way to where it like would keep you mm -hmm. from doing it one way or the other. Where well, it's just like in a way, they're black and white for me. They just are, right? Like it's like, well, no matter what, like okay, so that's what it is. That's what it is. So what else? Do I, what other framework do I look at? It's it's figure out how to do it. You know, right? So if we were to propose a budget, this is we've done it a million many times. Where it's like, well, our cash flow looks like it's going to be behind by X amount. It's like cool. We don't want that. So. Right, so my, that my goal is emotion. Yeah, exactly. What is it? And if and if it's not only that, it's that plus we want to do other things. Then I'm like, great. There's a my job is to figure out what gets us there, hmm. and that just is like there's no other choice. Right. So for me, it's like it becomes more gamified, which I think can be an advantage, and it can be. I it is stressful when we think. When you feel like there's no solution, that's when I get stressed and afraid. I just right. never feel like there's no solution. Right. And because I think there's a million ways to solve a problem. Sometimes right. it does become unconventional and, and odd. But I mean, that's the same example where it's like, yeah, we're having a hard time communicating our values clearly. So instead of like forcing it, we're going to rework them to say them better. And it's the same idea in my mind with business sometimes too. And and after that, then there's just like goals alignment and stuff too. You know, it's like, do you open 12 more cafes and yes or no? And I could argue either way, you know, and that's right. That's like a different thing and different levels of stress, but. Or not based on what you've described. Well, it's for the, me, exactly the same. For me, it wouldn't. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like from what you've just said, that 12 cafes wouldn't make one bit of difference to you. I think it would. It could in terms of. Well, it all depends on who you can bring along with you. I believe that if you have the ability to paint a picture and offer a reward that is valuable, which is not only monetary, but it would be for some, people want to come do special and amazing things. I think that's why our company has been successful. I agree with that. So in that regard, like it would be stressful, but I also believe that people want to come with, and I believe that we can, and I could help paint pictures for people to do a great job and that reward is so worth the the stress of that work and that stress of that work feels really good sometimes because mm. you're working with somebody to create to something. create something and it's not only f like it's it, it feels really good to help somebody step into that place even if they need me to like come alongside and hold hands for a little bit here and there and some for me and it's not for everybody but yeah um but it is really powerful for me to see the, in my mind, the vision of what it looks like on the other side of said thing. And sure. that, that for me has been really, really powerful and helpful for a lot of stuff. Not for everybody, but yeah. I mean, no, that been, totally makes sense. Yeah. I'm, what about for you? Bach? I've never had a problem visualizing anything. That's never been a problem. And I agree with like fundamentally pretty much everything that you've said to where it's like, I mean, the two most important things for me are, am I around people I enjoy being around? And am I working for something that I actually believe in? Yeah. And can I, when I'm working for that thing that I actually believe in, can I commit to that thing and not make bullshit excuses because something's just a little bit easier, a little bit whatever, a little, like, I think that's just like the path to normal. I don't want to work for anywhere that's normal. It sounds lame. McDonald's is normal. Starbucks is normal. Like, and all those things that we consider like completely normal, like those things happen one step at a time, like one shitty yeah. decision at a time. So mm. that's why I'm kind of the guy in the meetings often that's like, we need to have this structure. We need to figure this out systematically or it's just like slippery slope to like normalsville. Yeah. You know, it's like, like intention, in intentionality all places, in all places. It's like everything. Yeah. Starbucks used to be a boutique roaster and yeah. like cutting edge coffee shop yeah. mm -hmm. right yeah. <laughs> and now they're the mcdonald's of coffee right yeah. it's like those things happen over decades not just they totally. didn't they didn't start and be like we're gonna do this it's like howard schultz had a very compelling vision about bringing italian coffee yeah. culture to the united states and creating a third place where people could engage with their communities that wasn't work or home that's an awesome vision you mm -hmm. know no one would walk into starbucks now and feel 
that that vision no. yeah. at all. So I think like oh. I ha- I have to believe in it and I have to be able to see it. That's that's never been a problem. I think the thing that I struggle with the most in my work is figuring out how to deal with the um, the stress that comes with having a a lot of people it's like how was i explaining this to someone i was like we have a lot of we have a lot of great people on the on the team and right now i think like if you took our leadership team most of them have really awesome jobs i couldn't look you dead in the eye and say that you have a career so there's a hump that we have to get over to get mm-hmm. them to from like really awesome job to career and you know what are the what are the i don't know what the bed it's really hard to like go down that road to like figure out the differences between job and a career because it's like honestly from what we're paying the leadership team like most of them could live here in the capacity that they live here and they just wouldn't have a lot of extra money probably not be able to retire you know like so it's good um it's it's a rough one. We don't want that, you know. Mm-hmm. Want people to be able to like grow and, and meet a certain point. But at, at some point, it just the okay. We started Portola. If it fails, it's on us. Yeah, we go down in flames, mm-hmm. and everybody else that resonated with the idea, those eight people are probably sad, and then they all go get other jobs. Yeah, right. That's the path. Um, you said that business owners are kind of resource allocators. That's part of it. But the bigger part of it is that they're vision creators and yeah. builders because we launched Portola when we launched our company, but we're actually launching smaller versions or not even smaller versions. They're actually bigger, even though they might seem smaller. We're launching new things all the time that may or may not take. Resonate with people, connect with people. So if most entrepreneurs have some sort of stomach for that failure it becomes fuzzier when there's a lot of other people involved and i'm not sure if they have the stomach for that are ready to do what's necessary to get through that or like maybe it's just i feel uncomfortable leveraging someone else's like situation towards like Mm. we theoretically could do a thing or series of things that made some part of our business be like oh shit this is like we're re- like we're really in trouble here. Like, what <laughs> yeah. are we gonna do? <laughs> and that's just like a tricky one for me to. I don't know. I'm like I have a hard time just like s- squaring that off. Sometimes it's not like a daily thing where it just it just nags me. I just it's just interesting for me. So like square like when you're saying squared off, you're talking about the the impact on the people doing that work or just the the overall impact of being in charge of that i wasn't following exactly yeah i think it's just it's not necessarily being in charge of it it's just being being in the seat that i'm in Mm. because you know it's like i'm not like directly in charge of all of those things happening like none of us really are like collectively we are yeah um absolutely so it's just uh it's just interesting for me yeah i don't know but I mean, also in the same regard, it's like the beginning, we we close and the people move on. But yeah, now if we close, all the people are actually, most of them are set to have way better jobs if we close. That's a great, well, that's, <laughs> no, that's a great way. To, like, that's a great way to look at and it. I'm, yeah. And I don't think we're going to close, but I'm saying like, <laughs> no, I don't everybody either. in those leadership <laughs> places. And in no. fact, like, I mean, I'm not planning on us really, really <laughs> just full disclosure. But, I'm planning I mean, on being here. <laughs> to, no, no. But the, the antithesis of that to me is that like all these people have some okay. irreplaceable experiences no, that's and great. stuff that they can offer to places that honestly, I don't think I see because of our mission and our values. I love it. Shit. I love that attitude. That's like exactly what I needed to hear today. So when I'm, <laughs> no, I swear I'm, I'm like, not, I'm not, that's, li- that's literally why uh, I that's think great. I have the, the feelings that I do that I that's or perfect. the lack of feelings in some regard. That well, this changes a lot of how we're having <laughs> great. No, no seriously, because this has never been brought up in any of our conversations. So Robert Foley is a motivational speaker. I love what you're doing here. So if we went out of business tomorrow, I don't have to be bummed that Herman doesn't have a job. I'm actually stoked because Herman is so good at what he does, so skilled and has a reputation as a professional 
that he could probably make more money somewhere else. He could probably go to a company that's bigger than ours, that's more resourced, and say, hey, do you want me to turn your, like, let me run your hospitality division. I think most of our team leaders could do that. Great. And a lot of our coordinators could probably do that. This is incredible. Right, right. Tr- well, I mean, that, we've, but we've always wanted to be a school, and we've seen of that before when, like, uh, we've had a coordinator who went and then ran a whole shop at a different, at, like, the busiest shop but at a different went company, and killed it, and right. crushed it. Yeah. So I agree. I I agree with what you're saying. I just don't often frame it like that. And I think mm. there has been this progression of how we've talked about things, and I I think we're getting better about it. To where, and again, this is a really interesting thing to talk about because on one end everyone's an individual and you genuinely care about the people that you work with Mm -hmm. and like nobody in leadership here would, I don't think you can lead someone that you don't care about. I think it's physically impossible. Um, you just can't be there and show up in your best self for someone that you really, really just don't give a shit about. You gotta have some level of care for the people in Mm -hmm. your charge. Um, and then in the past we used to talk about certain people's, individual needs in a vacuum that was almost like separate from the needs of the company or what we what we were resourced to do as an organization Mm, and then over time we've done a better job of kind of figuring out like okay cool here is a here is a like a a job that exists like this job has a certain cultural contribution Mm -hmm we deem this cultural contribution valuable. Every single individual will have like a slightly different way of executing on that cultural contribution, but the contribution, the thing, the asset to the business is more or less the same. Like it needs, it's a role that needs to be filled. Mm -hmm. And like talking about those things as roles rather than people. Absolutely. Where it's like when we first started, it's like we have to retain this team no matter what. Mm -hmm. If we don't keep this team. Like these specific individuals. These specific people right. were screwed but what we've seen over time is that right it's like we still s- sometimes can slip back into that false belief of if we lose x person yeah. we're not going to be able to fill it and what we're really every time we've had churn the next person to occupy any given role that we thought a superstar was in is better yeah. like and oftentimes by large margins yeah which supports Everything that you were saying, Jared, which is we're essentially creating people who are equipped and ready to step up. Also, combo is like we're betting, we're getting better at identifying the proper cultural fits to mm-hmm. go in those positions. We're like taking heed to all those things. So, and then, and then we can have a, a conversation about things like what is something that we'd like to provide for someone who's in this position mm-hmm. rather than right. like I feel beholden to. Herman and I have to make him happy at all costs. Right. Sure. Right. right. And I just use Herman as an example because he's just he's you know Herman's undeniably a superstar. He's he's one of our he's our, best one of our longest team leaders. T- he's been here for seven years. Well. Like super lucky to have and, someone like and Herman. Mark and Alyssa like, are our longest tenured humans. Awesome. Like, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. And yeah. like so proud of everything he's done. And like you know I actually do believe he could that guy could fucking get a job anywhere he wanted. Yeah. yeah. Like um. So yeah, okay, this is great conversation. Well, I think there's there's totally, there's all that. And then I think some of the magic happens when you find a way to bring these people who want to impact your business, you find a way to bring their passions to light in the context of what we need as a company. And that's as totally. the upper leadership come together. That's Absolutely. also it's right. Make sure that we're not denying every single personal passion they have to help develop the company that they're believing in to create. No, and yeah. It's like, know, I like, mean, that's part the next of, part, right. Part of our job. Mind. And I, you know, earlier I said like being an entrepreneur is resource allocation, but it's like, it's so much more than that. Right. Cause you're creating the vision, mm-hmm. right. The vision of where you want to lead everybody to, right. And, and you're how talking, you see them playing a part. Right. In it. Exactly. Well, right. And, and it's not how, just, yeah, that's, right. that's what I, that, yeah, sorry. I cut no, you no, off. No, I get no, excited. No, but just on that part, right. It's like, creating the vision and then you have all these amazing people who want to go to this place with you and then do it in a way like well and then what he's saying too is i also fully believe and that's what i meant when like people will bring their own specific thing to that even if it like wiser's editing this podcast so we'll just talk about wiser we have these design needs right Mm -hmm. it's like we have this design department that needs to put out these 
essentially visuals that tell the story of our company and those live on our bag and those live on our building and those live mm-hmm. literally everywhere you see cat and cloud so that is like a need we need to have this designer mm-hmm. um so we could hire a bunch of different people that design so sure. like wiser's doing it in a way that only he can do it mm-hmm. and someone else could have that role and our logo would look different sure <laughs> you know what i mean like the lockup that he created just wouldn't exist it mm-hmm. just wouldn't you know we'd all always have our og logo because that's forever yeah and like all the other aspects would look like probably pretty different sure so that's like that's like a cool case to see how you know people can use their creative gifts in service of something bigger and the work because i fully believe work doesn't have to be a place that squashes your personality Mm -hmm. if you get in the right job fit it lets it bloom Mm -hmm. yeah like you learn more about yourself you grow you get to share the things that like and it's not a selfish share it's not like i like to design so i'm fucking designing whatever i want to fucking design for cat and cloud it's more of like everything is a service like you Mm -hmm. know everything's in service of something bigger because being a service is like I mean, dude, it's one of the best things you can do is like helping other people is incredible. So. Totally. Feels it, good. It really does feel <laughs> good. <laughs> well, I, like, I think that's where you are challenge in some of the strategy and some of the thing you mentioned, which is one of the most valuable things, though, is to showcase as owners and visionaries how we see currently our named individuals in these roles right how we can see them playing a part in our development and how we also are paying attention to how they we might develop them to help them in their lives and that's where you have to i think find that place because how valuable does it feel to know that your boss or the owner of the company is actually thinking about you individually i i think that way and that's where i think we work our way to the right place which is as a position, we need these things done no matter what. As you in this position, you know, how can we offer something for you that really yeah, put is you a in, value yeah. in both directions? What do right? you mean by that? Because that's a it's, it's, diff, it's individualized, which is why I think it's beautiful. But it's like, but it's like in the if, right seat on the bus where they're able to use their gifts sure, to like but like further mean, the well, mission and the I values. Mean, yeah. Yes. And if somebody has been forever super de- like okay we can use the unreasonable hospitality book or that ideas some people in our company have been obsessed with hospitality they want to learn more about it they want to dive more into it and we can teach them what we can teach them but we also could find a way to offer them growth opportunities in that area and say to them i've noticed this about you and i want to offer you know going to origin was one of them as well but like we're going to put you in this place where you're going to continue to be able to personally develop. I see you being able to help us. Like it's, it's like a combination of thank you. And I'm thinking about your development and I want to help you grow. And that could be a number of different. That's one example. Another right. one could be. So sending someone who's really interested to green coffee, sure, in green coffee one. to origin could be one. It could, it could um, literally be if they want to see it all the way through, it could be a cafe or it could be, we weren't, we didn't have a coffee roastery and you really will like, you will go do this. I know you will roast coffee. You know, like if I provide you this canvas, you will help my business and you will be that person. Like, what do you mean by that? Cause that's where I'm getting caught well, up. We don't, like, ha- we don't need that, but right. But like, somebody what, might. What, what would be like a real life example of that? Because well, I, okay. I, think I, about, think about young business owner, young business owner might want to do every single thing they can. They often so many things, so many questions we always get is like, how do you, how do you make it so that you're not just like, doing everything all the time and looking at individuals and helping them grow alongside of you is how you like, you have to develop somebody. So nobody else is going to do it. Right. So you have to start somewhere and you develop them unless we want to be, or they want to be the kind of business like, yeah, yeah, you're out resource managed, like find a new resource. And if you find somebody who's culturally connected, I think that's what we've done is you, you find a way to develop them. So if, yeah, you're a younger business and you know, you want to roast, but, I'm the business owner who's not going to roast. You have to find somebody. You're just talking about bringing people up. Because it sounded like you were saying, there's like, a, you want to open a roastery well, for our a company, diff- you should go do that. Well, uh, you're saying you're maybe. Gonna, like, or, what, if, what if you are just a cafe and somebody's in your company and they're like, dude, roasting would be so epic and you're buying coffee from Wherever'sville and 
they're like, I really would do it with you. And you're like, well, yeah, the only reason I didn't before is I just don't want to roast. And it's like, but it's like you can provide the opportunity it's up for to someone you. who's really passionate yeah. about something to continue to develop in a certain area. It could area. be anything. Like, I'm saying it could be roast. anything. That's I understand an example. that. And I'm yeah. resonating with that. That sounded like a little different. That sounded like more of a, um, which I agree with that, but all in the need of maybe circle it, make you I'll, simplify the whole thing in like, how can you as an owner and upper leader make sure that people know that you're looking out for their personal interests and development as well as your own? And how can you show them that you're trying to move them as well as you and your business forward in the same direction? And it doesn't yeah. always, and it's that feels, individual. That feels yeah. completely concise. Yeah. And it, it that's felt, that's, that the, felt that's like- the idea. And it can be, like I said, my ideas apply in my brain to like 20,000 different levels. And that's a, hard to follow sometimes, but well, no, that's just, the concept. Well, let's not, no, I mean, yeah, well, let's still make excuses for your brain. Okay. Well, but, um, come that's on. how it works. That's why it's hard to follow. <laughs> what? what? You asked for an no. example? <laughs> that's one of them. Uh, hey, everybody has to make like a case, a clear case for their mm-hmm. ideas. You know what I mean? That idea is the, <laughs> is the idea that could be applied to making somebody a green buyer, even though maybe, you know, maybe you could put them somewhere else versus, you know, it's, it's, but I've got this passion yeah, for this like, thing. Like getting to know the people that work with you in a way where you understand where they want to go and how you could help them get there. Yeah. Right, and then, but then yes, versus like just being like ah, you're number one, two, three, four, right. and like not right. You know, and- I guess the where where I was like feeling a little tension with that is totally agree with that. There are some catch twenty two as to where it's like going back to what I said earlier, like you can't lead someone that you don't care about because you're never going to do those things for someone that you don't care about, right? Because it's like oh maybe yeah totally, or you don't think so. Like, I don't know. I just haven't thought about. You think you could invest in someone's career path that you didn't care about at all? Because like the things that you're saying mm-hmm. to me, I equate with caring, which are like, right? You know, I I want to help you grow. I want to help you find a path forward that makes sense. Like I want to help you level up. Essentially, it's yeah. Like, you could think about it. I think if you think about it purely as a function of like I'm just doing this because it'll help the business, there might be something that's going to fall short. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I agree. I think okay, yeah. That's where I don't know if I agree because I think if you do a good job with it, as long as the person doesn't culturally damage your business through the process, they still helped everybody move forward and the next person that steps into that place is better off. And the story they tell about mm. you as the leader is better as well. So you. So it's like, yeah. I think it's a win, 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 even if I don't. And it's not even if I don't. It's just like, yeah, even if I don't think they're going to be the one, it still benefits everybody around. Well, not even being sometimes, the, not even being the one. No, I'm no, just it's saying, hard, it's like um, it's a hard one for me to explain. Right. I'm just thinking like, like think say okay, so check this out. Like, and this is where I think I was saying we needed to we got better at how we do this. But say we had all the information that we have now in our understanding of our business, and we only had the one store, and we knew we needed to resource to do what we needed to do, you know, like I would be pouring into every single one of those people, even though I know a lot of them are only going to stick it out for a year or two because the level up in general across the board is so high versus if I were to just pour into one or two, probably because the, that's the resource that's the resources utilized to get us the furthest, the fastest. So it's like the win, win, win is there at this, maybe the sacrifice and the stress of myself in the interim for the more, freedom stability a little bit further down the road maybe right. that's, no, that that's makes like sense. my strategy that doesn't feel at yeah. odds with what i'm saying at all yeah, yeah. like that that doesn't feel like but i might not believe in all of them the same way you know what i'm saying so i'd still probably like the investment mm, that group's still awesome i see what you're saying but i'd still invest in somebody who uh like who i'm like yeah they're probably not going to make it but i'm still going to try to push them as far as i can in this direction because it's going to be beneficial to everybody around right that's a really good attitude to have yeah it truly comes from survival though like it comes from like being so afraid of having nothing that you need to make sure you don't it's also can be mixed with the super positive belief in people and it does live in that tension with me if i'm honest but like because the one they're, of the, not, they're not it's not still not bad because it's still in the the whole goal is that everybody wins anyway sure it's so very I guess that's the it's very it. professional from like <clears throat> an appropriately influenced point right right? to where it's like if your goal is to drive the culture forward like right and you have a team of 10 people 
it honestly doesn't matter how you feel about any exactly. of those people. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to invest in those people as if they were all my best friend ever on earth or like the person right. who I thought was going to win the most and then by doing yeah, that like doing more of them have a better chance right. of success than raising not. the floor. Then the fear antithesis side is when you overinvest in the individual via name because you have to have them and you don't see the writing on the wall to help make sure you're holding everything accountable. And that's the other side of that we were talking right. about briefly. Well, and then the other side that the other point that I was going to follow up on is like, you know, see, you, you had mentioned seeing where people want to go and yeah. grow, which I can be good as long as those people are some version of self-aware because some people aren't or willing to. Right. Yeah. Well, because I guess it's the same like, thing. Yeah. Cause sometimes you'll have people who are like, I'm really killing it at this and I need to, and I'm, I'm like stoke this and I'll do this and do this. And it's like, uh, you're like, actually, you're no, that's not. not like, there's like <laughs> zero track record of that or inclination of that. And, or, or to like my fault and good learning, they, they want to be a part of the culture and the, business and they love it but they actually don't like the work required to do right. so so that's kind that's, of where that's where you're right. going with that, that's where i was totally going where sense. it's like we've had these instances and we've all experienced them where it is yeah you keep saying like, you like this but Whoa. you're not doing it <laughs> you know and i don't understand and i, I think that's an important lesson because at some at some point that's exactly. and when i'm saying because i feel like i'll you know obviously i can't tell you anything but i feel like you do genuinely or generally like care about people in totally. some way shape or form and then totally. <laughs> yeah. like that's a fact right so <laughs> it's like yeah. people how, that probably on paper i shouldn't care about i care about more than right and I, then it, and then it's, it's less weird. about yeah. letting the and then it's like how do you how do you manifest that care because the more we go caring for some people might be having a conversation that says, hey, this just doesn't really seem like it's for you. Totally. <laughs> well, yeah, Versus caring before in the early years was kind of trying to keep them on at all costs because we really cared and believed, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and, we've transitioned to that. Right. There's, like these, there's this whole matrix of things that need to exist for someone to be successful and to be able to contribute their highest contribution in any given environment. Yeah, I think and, so. totally. And that'd right. be exactly what you need. Right? That matrix. Right. So you right. And then identifying those things, well, that's tricky. I mean But sometimes it's just showing them that you're thinking about it in a way that shows you know or you're attempting to know who they are and what's best for them. Period. Right? Like the conversation can still be tough and hard, but as long as it's no, that's it's, exactly what I'm saying. I totally hear you. Yeah. yeah. But that's, yeah. that to me is, it is, it's like sometimes the magic is just being like, look, like, you know, I'm, uh, they can, they get to see that you remembered this and that and the other and how it affected them and that affected their work life, not necessarily like that's more personal and true than like, you didn't hit your numbers and I asked for this kind of quality and you didn't give it to me. <laughs> and which, I mean, they're both not dissimilar in terms of what you're speaking to but the way it works when you understand an individual is far more powerful and i think that's that's like good leadership is knowing that you're like i'm in this with you and i see you it's empathetic and i have to have this hard conversation with you because because you know you get to, then it's different for everybody it's been different right i had a hard one i, I don't know if you know herman and i've had super hard conversations where it's like he's killing it operationally but we're talking years back but and it's coming off in such a way and we sit down and we talk it out and it wasn't easy for either side. Mm -hmm. And then we come back together and it's like, we talk about it a little more and then we find our way and it's really powerful and good. And, you know, and that's just in that regard, it's seeing somebody who, you know, wants a thing, but they're coming off one way or the other and same, we've had those with each other. I don't know if that's an over explanation of what you were saying or not, but I think I we were all, I think we were, everyone was saying like five different things and, then, <laughs> <laughs> and we went in a good zone though. We got more to go. We talked to Sorry about the timeline. We didn't get Whoa! anywhere on that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there next time. Woo! Maybe. Hey everyone. That's the podcast for the week. Thanks so much for listening. If you heard something that inspired you, let us know or tell a friend. 
These are the types of connections that are the most important to us and that we seek to create every day. If there's something you heard and you want to know more about, send us an email to podcast at catandcloud.com or head to our website, catandcloud.com slash podcast and let us know. While you're on our site, check out everything we have to offer. Dive deep into one of our single origin coffees or pick up a little treat for yourself. We have something for everyone, so check it out. Also, find us in the usual places, YouTube, Instagram. We're always there sharing amazing things. All right, that's it. Thanks everyone for being awesome. We'll be back next week.